I made a thing. Here's how I made that thing. Also, thanks to these guys. Go support. First, I decided to motion track the footage. Now, this footage was very easy to motion track. However, I did have difficulty finding a ground plane for the scene because there weren't any identifiable flat ground in the scene. In the end, I kind of just left it the best I could, and I knew I didn't have to get it perfect since I was going to model out the hill based on the points that the track would give me later. Another interesting thing to note is I enabled a margin around my footage, which basically means that the tracks will automatically stop once it gets closest to the border. This is because I had problems with tracks wanting to stick to the border once they go off the screen. Once I was happy with the tracking, it was on to the modeling of the UFO. Now luckily the model is super simple. All it took was some extruding and scaling, and with the help of the subdivision surface modifier, it allowed for me to get a really quick and easy model. It's always important to have reference for the modeling, so I tried to base it on what little photos that existed online. After that, it was on to the animation. Now the animation was super simple as well, just needing to change the rotation and position. I did want to keep some of the unique movement of the UFO in the film, such as its floaty and quick movement and the lack of up and down rotation. Is it pitch? Yaw? Whatever it is. I specifically wanted the UFO to quickly glide over the hill, which took some effort to nail down on the timing. Another thing to note is that I didn't use the points for the actual hill it gave me since if I did the UFO would be super tiny in the distance by the time it got over the hill so I decided to fake it. This will be a decision I will sorely regret later. Now that I look back at it I think a better solution would have been to slightly keyframe the scale but anyways. Next is the lighting. I just stuck with an HRI for this scene. I found this HRI off of Polyhaven and it seemed to match my scene perfectly. I added a little bit of an orange hue to it in order to match it to the color of the footage, but I'll end up changing this a little bit in compositing. Texturing was as simple as throwing a couple Musgrave textures together and plugging that into the roughness so it gives some variance. Oh, and I just slapped a black texture into the hole. Now to render out the UFO, I found the passes I needed simply by just enabling every single pass and disabling the ones that gave no output, don't judge me. I ended up only going with a RGB, alpha, and vector pass since it wasn't very complicated. After that finish, it was time for the shadow pass. I started by modeling a hill based on my tracking markers, but if you remember before I animated the UFO going through the markers, yeah it was time to reap what I sow. All it took in the end was some basic modeling and manipulating the plane until it looked right. I actually think the final project matched pretty nicely and followed the geometries of the hill pretty well. All that was left to do is create some collections and plug in the correct passes and I was ready for compositing. So I've been learning Nuke a lot recently and I've been loving it so that's the program I'm going to be using. I started out by merging the footage with our UFO pass. Then by adding a vector blur node, I was able to plug in our vector pass for the UV channels, and I was able to add some motion blur in post, which has saved me a ton of times. Next, I wanted to add some bloom from the light reflecting off the ship, so I added a glow node, and I tweaked it to make it look uh, only the bright parts of the image. Now onto the color matching, I made sure to grade each individual channel, and then adjust the black and white levels so it matched our footage. That way the UFO felt like it was correctly integrated into our scene. I was happy with how everything was looking, so now it was onto the rotoscoping, every compositor's favorite part, I wish. Except this roto job was super simple. Since the ship crossed over the hill super fast and we only had to deal with a few frames, I decided to track the hill using a tracking marker. Then once I had that marker tracked in our scene, I was easily able to parent that to a roto node, which would only allow me to roto one frame and then uh, let the tracking data take over the rest. Surprisingly, that seemed to work out pretty flawlessly, which actually saved me a ton of time of manual rotoscoping. Now that we had a mask of that area, I used that along with a road node to enlarge the mask and create a shadow on the UFO as it passes over the mountain. This is a nice little detail that really made it look a lot more realistic. Next for the mask, we use that to create a holdout of the hill that would basically uh, turn on at the correct frame once the uh, ship kind of passes it and that will make the ship look like it goes behind the hill. You can think of a holdout as basically cutting out a part of your image and pasting it on the top of everything else. Finally, it was time to add in our shadow to our composite. I dropped the shadow into the scene and using its alpha, I was able to color the footage to try to match it to the shadows of the rest of the scene. I prefer using the alpha as a mass uh, compared to just putting the shadow layer on top of the footage just because I find that using the actual footage's pixels is much more accurate in recreating a shadow. Now I did try to get a little fancy and add some dust uh, interaction on the ground when the ship passes 
But as you can tell, I mean, just lo look at that. So messing with it for a while, I just decided to scrap it at the end just because I couldn't find the right element and it just wasn't tracking properly. Some of the final touches involve matching the grain to the footage and then adding some lens distortion at the end, but that's about it. And finally, here is the final result that we got from this whole process. This shot was actually surprisingly easy to do and I had a lot of fun making it. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you could throw this video a like and consider subscribing so the algorithm gods can bless me, that would be fantastic. Also, let me know what you think of this style of video and I will see you in the next one. Peace.